Welcome to Tales from SYL Ranch, news and commentary from the heartland, and I am your host, Bill Stone. Well, I'm coming to you today with one that I really don't like having to give. In fact, I've kind of pussyfooted around in doing one and hinted at it in other uh, episodes, but today I'm going to do it for Outright Real. And that is simply this. I want to talk to my, the ladies in my audience. Ladies, if you claim to have been sexually assaulted or otherwise abused, and you have not done two very simple things, my default position now is that you are a liar. Because this is what modern feminism has done to you. It has transformed me from someone who five years ago would have automatically assumed that the victim was telling the truth into someone who automatically assumes that the victim is a liar. If you have not done two simple things, I will assume, as do many other men, I will assume that you are a liar. You are a bald-faced, two-faced liar who is only out for revenge or in order to use it as some kind of leverage. I have now seen too much of it, particularly in divorce. It is fantastically common in divorce. And I'm not talking about my own divorce. Thank God my own divorce was a lot less contentious than that. I'm talking about lots of men that I know who have been falsely accused of abuse of both women and children. And when that happens, there is precisely dick that a man can do about it. There's nothing we can do. You will be assumed to be completely right in the eyes of the law the moment you make that assumption, and you damn well know it, because it's happened so frequently. You know that you're going to be believed and the man is screwed. There's absolutely nowhere to go from there. They may go to prison. They may never see their children again unsupervised. We know that in many, many cases, and ladies, you know it too, you are liars. And we will now assume, I certainly will, I will assume that you are a liar unless you do two simple things. And those simple things are this. After it happens, whatever the abuse is, go to the hospital. Allow them to immediately gather forensic evidence that can be used in a court of law to prove that a man did what you say that he did. Because in many cases, genetic evidence left on your body will show that a specific individual is guilty of a crime. The second thing you have to do, obviously, call the cops. You have to call the cops. You have to call the police and report it. Go to the hospital, get the forensic evidence, call the police, have them come in, investigate the crime, and then take it to court and prove that a man is guilty. Otherwise, I assume that you are a liar. That's all you have to do. If you're really a victim, go to the hospital, call the police. There is no excuse for you not to. I don't care if you feel bad. I don't care if you're afraid. Those are the two things you must do, or I will assume that you are a liar. And by the way, it is your duty, it is your absolute duty to do these things. Because if you don't, you are partly culpable for the next woman that that man assaults. Let me give you a very specific example of somebody I know. I know a guy that I first met in like third grade or something like that. Complete psychotic. Complete psychotic. He has now been in prison for manslaughter, murder one, manslaughter again, and assault with a deadly weapon. He's gotten out every time. He's out now. I can't believe that he's out after having done all of that. Complete psychotic. But he killed three people. One of them was found absolutely cold-blooded murder. Now, what if I would have been standing there while this murderer killed someone? What if I had just been standing right there? He's here. I'm there 10 feet away. This guy kills a person, and I don't go to the cops? What sort of person does that make me? It makes me at least culpable for the next person. It means that I didn't do the right thing to get that son of a bitch off the streets so that he didn't kill again. And if you don't do it to someone who rapes or otherwise abuses you, you are partly to blame for the next person he does it to. Because these people do it habitually. Sexual assaults, sexual offenders are absolutely repetitive. They will do it and do it and do it and do it in the only way you will ever stop them is to get them off the street. So if you don't, well, not only will I assume you're a liar, but even if you really are a victim, you're letting this man go and do it to some other woman. What does that make you? And by the way, ladies, if you're 40 years old and you're sitting there in your apartment, 
tending to your cats, wondering where all the good men have gone. This is where we went. We discovered, due to feminism, that you are bald-faced liars. And there's a lot of other reasons. MGTOW, men going their own way, is a thing for a number of reasons, and this is one of them. It is the fact that you can make false allegations. You can lie to us, about us. You can come back 30 years after we did, you say we did something, say we say you did it with no evidence whatsoever, and half the population is going to believe you. Well, they shouldn't. You should always assume, everyone should assume, that you are a liar unless you have gone to the police, unless you have gone to the hospital, unless you have pressed charges, and unless there is a trial and that man is found guilty. Everyone should assume anyone who comes forward after the fact and makes allegations without having done those two things is a bald-faced, outright, two-bit, no-good liar. Because that's what you are. Now, this was brought home to me. You know, there's the Kavanaugh hearings. So that was really obvious. Complete falsehoods all along the line. Complete lies. And only someone who's so stupid that they'll always believe the victim would ever believe that. There's a case where you should not believe the victim. You should never believe the victim. Not unless you've gone to the hospital, gone to the police, had a trial, judged, and found guilty. And if you don't do that, these sorts of allegations are literally chipping away at the underpinnings of one of Western civilization itself. And that is, everyone is presumed innocent until proven guilty. You must now absolutely prove to me that you are guilty. I will only believe you automatically if you are an immediate family member, someone that I believe I can trust. Otherwise... I'm going to assume you to be a liar, which is what everyone should assume. That was often the case. I'd like to use examples for this. And again, the reason I'm hold doing this episode is because it was brought home to me. So let me give you an example of something that's going on right now that ticked me off and made me decide that it was come time to make this video where I had avoided doing a direct video about this in the past. This is actor Vic Mignogna. Now, actor Vic Mignogna, you can see him here. He is wearing a uh, original series Star Trek Star Trek uniform. I, I, I'm a Star Trek fan. Everybody knows it who watches me. I'm a Star Trek fan. That's why I use these things as examples. Vic Mignogna played Captain Kirk in the wonderful, incredible web series Star Trek Continues. If you've not seen this, if you're any level of Star Trek fan, go out and watch it. Just search for Star Trek Continues. Hell, I'll give you... I'll give you, I'll put a link in my description box, there'll be a link in my description box for a playlist that I have for that entire series. Go watch it. It is awesome. It is frankly awesome. So I'm a big fan of Vic's. I don't know two ways about it. I'm a big fan of his. However, I try to make, if something's going on where someone's accused of something, I try to go sort of recuse that part of my mind and say, all right, I'm going to try to figure out, you know, based on what I'm seeing, if there's something's true. Well, Vic, Vic is being accused of sexual assault and homophobia, or sexual abuse, or something like that. Now, let me tell you the various ways he's been telling us. There's some people who come out and said that he uh, somehow harassed them. These people have not gone to the police, nor gone to the hospital, and sometimes these things are a decade or more old. They are liars. They should be assumed to be liars because they did not go to the police, they did not go to the hospital, and they waited 15 years or more to report it. They're liars. Those we dismiss. Then he's being um, accused of essentially kind of sexually assaulting women or sexually abusing them at conventions because anytime you're an actor like this, he's, he, was, he made his name in voice acting. He made his name, uh, we should be very specific and upfront about this, he made his name in voice acting oftentimes for voicing what's called anime which is animation that is either from Japan or has a certain look and style and feel to it that originated in Japan. So he got his name as a voice actor for anime, oftentimes doing voice acting for English dubs of Japanese anime. So he gained a big, big following from that. Star Trek continues while being probably one of his pet, pet projects and, you know, something that I will remember him for, not so much anime, that's not my thing. But he got his name as an anime voiceover artist, as a voice actor. He, and he does other things besides anime. He's a very successful voice actor who has now been dumped by a number of the companies that continually employed him, employed him for many years because of these false allegations. Now, the other allegations are that he is essentially too touchy 
at conventions because every time you get into this, you know, it's a genre thing. You end up going to conventions, Star Trek conventions, anime conventions, all kinds of stuff. You go to all these conventions and you sit there and you sign autographs. Well, Vic is being accused of being too touchy. And the, what they're saying about him being too touchy is he will hug his fans. He will give them a kiss on the cheek or the forehead sometimes. That does not equal sexual assault. That equals playing to your fans. A couple of years ago, a couple, three years ago, I went to see Shania Twain in concert. Now, apparently, I am Shania Twain's sole heterosexual, unattached male fan. Because when I went there, all I was seeing was, you know, couples of some kind or another. I am apparently her sole, I was alone, I'm apparently her sole, unattached, heterosexual male fan. And she, I was sitting in an aisle seat. She came out, right down past me, raised my hand, and high-fived her. I have not washed my left hand since. I love Shania Twain. Shania Twain can hug me for a selfie, give me a kiss on the cheek, or a kiss on the forehead any damn time she wants. And I assume that 99.99% of Vic's fans feel exactly the same way. If they come up to a woman, female fan, put his arm around her, male fan for that matter, put your arm around her, hold it for a selfie, maybe give her a, pic, a kiss afterwards. Anytime Shania Twain wants to do that to me, that's fine. There are a number of Star Trek actors that anytime they want to do that for me, that would be perfectly fine. So we can throw all that out. Vic is not sexually assaulting his fans. He is playing to his fans. He is saying to his fans, thank you very much for supporting me. It's what all actors do to some degree or another. And Vic's just been very good about it. So we throw all that out. Then he's being accused of being homophobic. And this is the one that's the most ridiculous. Now I have to get into the, some of the specifics of anime for you, if you don't know. As with any fandom out there, anime has its twisted little monkeys. And Japanese uh, notions of what porn is can be kind of weird. Um, Japanese anime, which is animation, if you know, you're know you not a fan of that, we can call it a cartoon. That's not what we in fandom like to call it, but we call it a cartoon for you for this context. Anime has a couple of porn types in it. There is hentai and there is yaoi. Hentai, because one of my kids is a huge fan of anime, and because I, I felt as a parent that I needed to get an idea of what they're watching. I have suffered through a couple of hentai. Uh, hentai is uh, anime porn, it's cartoon porn, it's essentially cartoon characters having sex with each other, but sometimes it can get pretty nasty. I have watched more than one portraying a woman being gang-raped who then asks for more. And uh, Yaoi is the homosexual side of it. It's two male cartoon characters or more having sex. Well, Vic Mignogna, at conventions that he goes to, will refuse to sign Yaoi. What a surprise. You know, he, he, gets, he gets depictions of like characters that he has voiced and somebody wants, you know, having sex, and he wants them to, they want them to sign it. Well, of course he's not going to sign it. And it's not because he hates homosexuals. It's because he doesn't want his name associated with cartoon porn. I mean, how stupid do you have to be? Vic Mignogna is not homophobic. He just doesn't want his name associated with porn. We can throw it all out. There is absolutely... Nothing here. And Vic is now being outright persecuted. So, ladies, this is what feminism has done to you. Not feminism that brought you equal rights, the right to vote, equal pay, etc. This is the feminism that exists today. This is what it has brought you to. It has turned a man who lifelong, until very recently, would have assumed that if you said you were raped, you were raped. Now, if you come to me, unless you're an immediate family member, if you come to me and tell me that you were raped, I'm going to say, did you go to the cops? Did you go to the hospital? And if you say no, I'm going to say, go away. You're lying. This is what feminism has brought you to. So I'll just throw up a hashtag. Hashtag, I stand with Vic. I guess that's all I got to say about that.
So thank you very much for watching Tales from SYL Ranch. If you like what I'm doing, please do like, sub, hit the notification bell, tell all of your friends, family, neighbors, pets, and livestock to do the same. And if you want to support me, you can. There's a link to my subscribe star in the description box below, as well as my PayPal tip jar and a link to a page on my website where you can support me further if you feel like it. So thank you very much for watching Tales from SYL Ranch. Thank you for supporting me. And my name is Bill Stone. Ultimate power in this world has always been one simple thing, the control and manipulation of minds.